a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of the multitude, therefore, when they heard these words, said, This is truly the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, What? Does the Christ come out of Galilee? Hasn't the scripture said that the Christ comes of the seed of David and from Bethlehem, the village where David was? So there arose a division in the multitude because of him. Some of them would have arrested him, but no one laid hands on him. The officers therefore came to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said to them, Why didn't you bring him? The officers answered, No man ever spoke like this man. The Pharisees therefore answered them, You aren't also led astray, are you? Have any of the rulers believed in him or of the Pharisees? But this multitude that doesn't know the law is accursed. Nicodemus, he who came to him by night, being one of them, said to them, Does our law judge a man unless it first hears from him personally and know what he does? They answered him, Are you also from Galilee? Search and see that no prophet has arisen out of Galilee. Everyone went to his own house. When time comes, when we are made to choose between the banner of Christ and the banner of the world, which banner are we going to choose? In today's world, I think the challenge is already being laid on us. Are you willing to take a stand for Jesus? The Gospels of the fourth week of Lent have been telling us the real identity of Jesus as the one being sent by the Father. Through the things that He did and the miracle signs that He performed, many could not remain indifferent for a long time, especially when they were confronted with Jesus and his claim to be the Messiah and the one sent by the Father. Jesus' message and the miraculous signs he performed caused division for many in Israel. Some believed in him as the Messiah, others as prophet while others did not consider him neither a messiah nor a prophet. But the reaction of his longtime opponents, the scribes and the Pharisees, was contempt, since for them he was no other than a blasphemer and a great pretender as the Son of God. On our part as Christians, bearing the name of Christ, we have only two choices that determine the course of our lives and our final destiny. The choice to live for God's kingdom, which offers us struggle, sufferings, but eternal happiness awaits us, or the quest for the kingdom of the world whose happiness is temporary and it is in opposition to God's authority and commandments. Saint Ignatius of Loyola in his spiritual exercises offers us the meditation of the two standards the standard of Christ and the standard of Satan. Jesus contrasted his way to the way of the world quite emphatically. He who is not with me is against me. In 
in the explanation of John Monroe, a retreat director, he said that in the standard of Satan, Ignatius describes a fearful image of Satan sitting on his throne of fire and smoke and instructing his followers to go out into the world and ensnare our hearts so that we are not open to God's will. To trap us, he uses a wealth, possessions, honors, and pride. Satan starts by getting us to affixate on our possessions. Satan wants our wealth and possessions to become the focus of our lives and worldly success to be the goal of our lives. Satan also whispers to us that we need the praise and acceptance of others and tells us that because of our successes we deserve honors. Finally, Satan tries to convince us that we did it by ourselves. He tells us to be proud of what we have accomplished. He wants us to adopt the attitude of look at me and what I have done. On the other hand, Ignatius gets us to consider Christ as he stands on the great field in a lowly place. We are to listen as Christ instructs his followers to go into the world and lead everyone to freedom. On Christ's standard, we see spiritual poverty, insults, and humility. These lead to true freedom. Spiritual poverty means we live a life recognizing and accepting that all we have is a gift from God. Possessions are not something to be worshipped. In regards to insults, Ignatius tells us that we are to let God's love lead us through the illusion of self-satisfaction and approval of others to a life of serving others. We are called to a life of selflessness, and such a life will put us at odds with the world, which could result in insults and rejection. Finally, Christ called us to a life of humility, a life of unconditional love and service for God and others. Periodically, we need to look at our lives to see where we are standing in relation to the standards of Christ and Satan. If we find that we have drifted a little close to Satan's standard, we can strive to live a life of spiritual poverty by serving others through humble love and compassion. Remember, we are called to live in this world, but be of God's world. So whose standard are you standing under? As Christians, bearing the name of Christ, we are called to follow the banner of Jesus. 
but it's a bit uncomfortable to think that that we are supposed to bring the banner of Christ but in the way we live we are actually bringing the banner of Satan by sticking to what the world can offer forgetting almost if not completely the banner of Jesus that we are supposed to carry and manifest it in the way we live. Let us challenge ourselves by this meditation that Ignatius offers us. Prayer of St. Francis Xavier Eternal God, Creator of all things, remember that you alone created the souls of unbelievers, which you have made according to your image and likeness. Behold, O Lord, how to your dishonor many of them are falling into hell. Remember, O Lord, your Son Jesus Christ, who so generously shed his blood and suffered for them. Do not permit that your Son, our Lord, remain unknown by unbelievers, but with the help of your saints and the Church, the Bride of your Son, remember your mercy, forget their idolatry and infidelity, and make them know him, you who have sent Jesus, your Son, our Lord, who is our salvation, our life, and our resurrection, through whom we have been saved and redeemed, and to whom is due glory forever. Amen. <laughs>